Is America abandoning its bedrock principle of freedom of the seas? If so, the world is going to get even more dangerous. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. A bedrock principle of American foreign policy for over two centuries has been freedom of the seas. In the early 1800s, President Thomas Jefferson sent our Navy to fight the Barbary pirates who operated in the Mediterranean. They were seizing our ships for ransom and even sending captured seamen into slavery in the Ottoman Empire. Imperial Germany's unrestrained submarine attacks on our freighters was a major cause of our entry into World War I in 1917. One of the key tasks of our Navy since World War II has been to ensure open access to international waterways. One factor that is making the global situation the most menacing since the 1930s, when a series of catastrophic mistakes led to the Second World War, is the Biden administration's astonishingly weak, uncertain response to brazen assaults on the concept of freedom of navigation. The Houthis, who are cat's paws of the Iranian mullahs, have, since November, been launching attacks on shipping in the Red Sea, a vital global waterway. The Houthi assaults have severely disrupted shipping as vessels are being rerouted, raising costs, insurance premiums are rising almost tenfold. The volume of shipping in the Red Sea is down 90%. The U.S. and Britain occasionally hit Houthi bases. They have intercepted countless drone attacks, but what stuns our allies and delights our adversaries is that the U.S. hesitates to totally destroy the Houthis' ability to attack and also refuses to punish Iran for its responsibility. This equivocation only whets the appetites of our adversaries. Another shocking assault against the principle of freedom of navigation is China's open, shameless claim that it is the boss of the South China Sea, which is far more crucial to international trade than even the Red Sea. Beijing for years has been building man-made military islands to establish control. It is laying claim to a number of reefs, atolls, and islands that are disputed by other countries, such as Vietnam, Japan, Malaysia, and the Philippines. The U.S. has never stopped China's shocking militarization. China has been harassing fishing boats when they go into areas that China legally claims as its own. The latest, very ominous move here was Beijing seizing two Philippine boats that tried to resupply a shoal that belongs to Manila. Eight Filipino sailors were injured. The boats were later abandoned by the Chinese after their contents were removed. Other than words, the U.S. response has largely been a big nothing. Such feebleness can only invite more aggressive moves by China, Iran, Russia, and North Korea. This is what can lead to a major war. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions, and I look forward to being with you soon again.